Let's crack. So in this video, we're going to go over what resonance is. Okay, so resonance, loads of you already know about it because a lot of you have seen about opera singers or those movies when people are singing and the glass shatters. That's really unlikely to happen because it's really hard to get your voice to get you to sing, even an opera singer to sing at the exact right frequency, but it can happen. So what we're looking at here is what resonance is. And I think the easiest way to explain it again is to think about our glasses, okay, and why they might shatter. So resonance happens when the natural frequency, so the natural frequency is exactly equal to the applied frequency, okay? And the applied frequency, that's something like a forced oscillation, okay? So the applied frequency, you might see also called the forced frequency, or you might see it called as the driving force or the driving frequency. It's different ways of saying the applied frequency, okay? And normally this applied frequency happens because of some periodic force that is applied to the system, okay? So we're going to look at what this actually means right now. So let's say we take our glass. Glass, all the atoms inside that glass have a natural frequency. So what that means is again, we know atoms are a solid in a glass and they have some natural frequency. So what that means is when I'm talking or when there's some music playing and there's some waves, some sound waves hitting these glass atoms, they're gonna disturb the atoms slightly. And when they disturb the atoms, these atoms have a natural frequency that they want to oscillate at. Okay, so they want to oscillate at because of the thickness of glass, because of how the mass is distributed in the glass, loads of different reasons why. Okay, you just need to know they have a natural frequency that they want to oscillate at. But if I then apply a frequency, so that applied frequency again is our sound waves. If we keep increasing that frequency of the sound waves, increasing the frequency, increasing the frequency, at some point we'll reach a frequency when the frequency of those sound waves, the frequency of me singing is exactly equal to that natural frequency. So again, what we're saying, there'll be some point when my applied frequency of my voice is exactly equal to the natural frequency of that glass atoms. And what's going to happen then is they're going to vibrate more and more and more and more, and eventually they'll reach a vibration where the amplitude of that vibration is so large that it's going to end it to shatter, okay? Because the, what we're going to do is the stress that we're applying to it is more than the strength of our glass particles. So again, if we just look at our graph here, again, let's say our glass has a natural frequency that it wants to oscillate at. What we can do is we can apply a frequency. And if we start applying a frequency, what's going to happen is the amplitude, so remember the amplitude is just how much the particles vibrate by. So the amplitude is the maximum displacement of their oscillation. As we start applying this frequency, the amplitude of those vibrations is going to increase, 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 until we hit some peak. And the peak happens when the applied frequency exactly equals our natural frequency. And then, again, if we just keep increasing that frequency, the amplitude of the oscillations are going to start decreasing again. So other places happens is places like bridges, okay? So there's actually a bridge in the United States. And what happened was when it was built that they didn't think about resonance because the bridges, again, they're solids, they have atoms. When the wind hits that bridge or when people are walking over the bridge, that, that disturbs the atoms in the bridge and they have a natural frequency that they want to oscillate at due to the internal forces inside that solid. But what happened was the wind, so the driving force of that wind, the driving frequency of that wind, which was periodic, it just kept happening. The frequency of that wind in that bridge exactly matched the natural frequency of the particles inside that bridge. And then what happened was the particles vibrate, vibrate larger and larger and larger until it hit a peak amplitude when that amplitude, that vibrations was so much that caused that bridge to break. Okay, so that actually happened in the United States. So resonance is really important to think about a lot if you're doing engineering. Okay, last thing you need to know about resonance is again about dampening, okay? So dampening. So we know again, particles have an amplitude that they want to oscillate at, right? And we know that the amplitude always stays the same for our waves, right? But what actually happens is we have air resistance, okay? So let's say 
I have a pendulum and my pendulum is swinging, right? It's oscillating. We know what actually happens is the amplitude, so amplitude, remember, is that maximum displacement from its equilibrium position. What actually happens is the amplitude doesn't stay the same, right? You know the amplitude will decrease, decrease, decrease over time because of air resistance. So what actually happens is when we start swinging our pendulum, the amplitude should start decreasing over time. So the amplitude starts decreasing over time to eventually it stops vibrating, okay? So that's called our light dampening. And again, that happens because of like air resistance. It causes the oscillations to decrease over time. There's another one you might know about, which is called heavy dampening, okay, or over dampening. Over dampening is maybe we put our pendulum inside a big thing of honey, okay? So my own honey are really viscous fluid. And what's going to happen then is maybe when it starts to oscillate, maybe it'll never get back to its equilibrium position. So we can call that our over dampening. So it's when it starts to vibrate, so let's say we're starting here, our maximum amplitude, when it starts vibrating, it's never going to get back to its equilibrium position. And the other one you need to know about is our critical dampening. So critical dampening is when you want it to return to its equilibrium position as quick as possible. So again, let's say we start at maximum amplitude, we want it to return to its equilibrium position as quick as possible, and that is called your critical dampening. Okay, so critical is when it returns to equilibrium as quick as possible. Okay, we need to know as well, how can we apply this to our graph, okay? So again, we've got a graph here of amplitude against frequency. Let's say we put it in dampening, okay? So again, we've got our pendulum, okay? Or we've got our glass. If we put it in dampening, maybe put the whole glass in honey, what's going to happen is the, free, the amplitude of the oscillations are all going to decrease over time. So we know that the amplitude of oscillations all drop over time for any frequency because we've damped it. And what's going to happen is the natural frequency actually gets reduced. So if you were to add a line to this curve, and sometimes this comes up in your multiple choice questions to pick which one's correct, what's going to happen is, again, our amplitude for all frequencies drops and it gets shifts towards the left because the natural frequency of the system also changes because of the dampening. Okay, so then what you're going to do again, again, that the frequencies at all, the amplitude of oscillations at all frequencies decrease and the peak shifts towards left and it comes slightly wider. Okay, so just facts you need to know about this graph.